Jürgen Piper, he has headed the equity research department of Metzler Equities since October of 2003 and also covers the European automotive and transportation industry. Well, he joins us now live from Frankfurt. Jürgen, thank you so much for being on the show. In terms of what, uh, you know, customers want, it seems that they like the luxury because the luxury sells in emerging markets such as China, where the growth is so much stronger than what we're seeing here in, Western, in the Western economies. Absolutely. What we've seen the last uh, five, six quarters was a real boom for premium cars. Uh, you look at uh, not just BMW and Porsche, you also look at Mercedes and Audi. This is a very stable double digit growth since early 2010. And this has uh, carried to a point in the second quarter where BMW made record earnings in absolute and also in margin terms. Uh, Jürgen, talk me through the car makers that you think look the most attractive. I mean, how do you attract customers? I guess you have to be fuel efficient, but you also have to have that desirability, the car that everybody wants because it's considered the coolest. Absolutely. I mean, you see, you see a, a strong uh, trend for the whole premium car sector. So this also has to do with the, with the new economies like, like China, where we have a growth of 70, 80, 90 percent now for, for many months. So this is first, I would say, uh, is really a strong movement of the premium car sector as such. But then you, you see, of course, differences. And uh, for the last few quarters, you saw uh, BMW, Audi and Porsche outperforming Mercedes. And this, of course, has to do with, with products. At the moment, people just love luxurious SUVs. They, they love big limousines. Uh, this is, I think, the, these are the, the biggest uh, success uh, uh, products like, for example, the 5 Series of BMW, uh, the, the Axis of BMW, the, uh, the Q5, Q7 of Audi, and also the Cayenne of Porsche. These are the most desired uh, products right now. And you're going to, if you actually look, so, so that's the kind of split in terms of luxury and more modest cars. But if you look at the split geographically, it's very clear that Fiat is going for the U.S. market through Chrysler. Renault, of course, is going for the Japanese market and the Asian markets through Renault. Which one is going to be on top the strongest? Uh, the strongest uh, for, for some years will be the emerging markets, China first, the rest of Asia second, Eastern Europe I would say third. And the US at the moment is, is making a nice recovery but mm -hmm. from very, very depressed markets. So this is driven more or less I would say by the substitution of, of very old cars. We have probably some 10% growth for some for three, four, five quarters. Mm -hmm. But the, if you look at two, three years ahead I would say then China and the other emerging markets are the best places to be. And so what does it mean for the U.S. car makers? Because we're expecting figures from Ford, but also from um, General Motors a little bit later on. Is there one company that will do better because it's skewed towards these emerging markets where growth and demand for cars is stronger? Yeah, at the moment, both GM and Ford are exposed. They are exposed, uh, of course, to North America naturally and also to, to Latin America and China. So they they uh, benefit from, from both at the moment. Uh, it's a bit more short-lived than for the premium car makers. So let's say for the next two, three quarters, I would say Ford and GM show nice momentum. Ford, I would say, even a bit better than GM. Yeah. Uh, but for, for two, three years, I would more uh, put uh, my money into, into the premium cars. All right, Jürgen, thank you so much.